consider it a reminder. Who knows, like I said, maybe one day Sega actually will make an enhanced port of Sonic 3. If you're watching this from the good future where this actually happened, then I probably would recommend playing that version. Sega, if you ever actually do release this port and put it on PC, I will apologize for every single time I said fuck you, Sega. I will do a playthrough of Sonic 3 Knuckles, but every time I jump I'll say, I'm sorry, Sega! Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, it all started back in 2017. I was a little upset with Sega because the incredibly good widescreen mobile ports of Sonic 1 and 2 weren't available on console or PC for seemingly no reason since they were willing to port CD to those platforms. I was also upset because it seemed very much at the time like we were never going to get a widescreen remaster of Sonic 3 & Knuckles, my favorite game in the series. So I may have made a cheeky little video where I beat Sonic 2 but every time I jumped I said fuck you Sega. So I thought it would be a funny little joke to offer to essentially do the inverse of that if they ever actually made a widescreen PC port of Sonic 3 & Knuckles because I really did not expect it to ever happen, what with the whole Michael Jackson music situation, and the fact they literally made a little proof of concept to show Sega saying, hey, we can do this one too if you want, but uh, they were essentially shot down. So when Sonic Origins was first announced, the trailer showed Sonic 1, 2, and CD in widescreen, but the Sonic 3 and Knuckles footage was still in 4x3. However, it was soon clarified on Twitter that it actually will be in widescreen in the final version. And yesterday, we finally got to see the first actual trailer for Origins, and it was magnificent. It looks to include the Taxman versions of 1, 2, and CD. Excuse me, I should actually say the Taxman and Stealth versions to be more accurate, particularly since Stealth is back to finally finish that widescreen version of Sonic 3 & Knuckles with the help of some other extremely cool people. Just in case you haven't seen every one of my videos, or you don't think about Sonic 24-7 for some reason, so you may have forgotten, let me just remind people of my belief that the extra screen real estate you get in a 2D Sonic game by going to widescreen is an absolute game changer. That extra split second you get to see obstacles in front of you and react accordingly makes the games feel so much smoother to play, particularly in a game where you constantly move fast like Sonic. Ah, the animated parts in the trailer are so cool. I love them so, so much. Tyson, Hess, and Co. continue to produce godlike Sonic animations. That animated Mania intro is so amazing, it puts a huge smile on my face every time I even think about it. I seriously can't wait to see more of these. Apparently there's some kind of story mode in this collection, like all the games in a row with little animated cutscenes combining them. That sounds really neat, and I am absolutely down to see how that'll play out. You know, it's funny. Sonic 1 has got to be one of the most re-released games in gaming history, up there with Skyrim and Resident Evil 4. This is the third re-release of Sonic 1 and 2 on the Switch alone. However, this is going to be the definitive edition of these games. Besides just being in widescreen, it seems to have a bunch of other cool features. Like Boss Rush is always fun, I'll never say no to a Boss Rush. And thank you for putting Blue Spheres mode on the main menu. I'm sure Blue Spheres guy will be thrilled. As far as the mission mode goes, it seems like it could be interesting, but I'm going to need to really dive into it before I make any judgments. Like, I'm going to need to see what some of the harder challenges look like in particular. I'm a real gamer, I'm down to have my Sonic skills tested here. Apparently this collection will include an unlockable mirror mode, which is actually a very cute addition, honestly. I've been thinking about doing a mirror mode run ever since I saw Test Snaker's video where he did it for Sonic 2. Honestly, it just seems like a fun little gimmick. I'm really glad they included it. I think you'd be surprised at how different the game feels with one little change, especially if you played through it a million times. Also, this wasn't advertised anywhere to my knowledge, but there's some evidence that the drop dash is in the game. If you look closely at this Sonic 3 footage from the trailer, you can see what looks to be the drop dash animation. That would certainly be a much appreciated feature. Drop Dash is such a fun and instantly iconic move that it almost feels weird going back to the classics after spending a lot of time in Mania. That also means there might be some other cool unlockable features they aren't going to reveal yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing what those might be. These menus with the 3D rendition to the islands are absolutely incredible, I love them. This is exactly the kind of thing I want to see in a collection like this. It's just that kind of loving attention to detail that could really elevate a product. They have not stated if the Sonic 3 music situation is sorted, so we'll see. It would be really great if it was all there, but you know, if not, we can always mod the original music back in. 
In an ideal world, we could have a toggle to choose between the final tracks and the beta versions, but we'll see, that might be wishful thinking. There looks to be a customizable Sonic sprite? That seems pretty cool. I imagine it'll basically just be a do you want to use the Sonic 3 version instead option, but I appreciate any extra customizability options like that. It shows that they care. There might not be as ridiculously comprehensive and granular an options menu as something like Sonic 3 Complete, but that's a tall order. I'm still pretty impressed by what they've shown off so far. There's a brand new character called Coins. Kinda looks a lot like Sonic to be honest. Wait a minute, if we rearrange the letters in Coins, Coins is Sonic! Okay seriously though, just seeing a coin counter in classic Sonic is hurting my brain, it kinda freaks me out. They're what's in place of lives in Anniversary Mode. Also seems like you can earn them from Mission Mode too, and they're used to unlock museum bonuses. Could be interesting, I'm very excited to see what kind of stuff they have in this museum. Praying for something really cool, like maybe some rare concept art images. You can also use coins to retry special stages in anniversary mode, which is interesting. It's cool they have like a practical gameplay application too. Personally, I'm glad they're including an unlimited lives mode, even though of course I'm such a pro Sonic gamer that I never run out of lives. I know the limited life system was a huge turnoff for a lot of people. I don't really want to get into the whole philosophical debate about how lives are an archaic game concept or whatever. That could be a whole separate video, but either way, including the option to play with unlimited lives is just a nice quality of life feature that'll make the game more accessible to a lot of people. But, all right, here's the part of the video you've all been waiting for. The part where I nitpick it and bitch and moan about stuff I don't like. I think it's fair to be critical considering the last Sonic remaster we got was not handled particularly well. The game is split into two distinct modes, Anniversary and Classic. Anniversary has the widescreen and unlimited lives, and Classic has the traditional live system in 4x3. There's really no reason to not make these toggleable features in a menu. Like what if you want to play Classic mode with unlimited lives, are you just fucked? I'm not 100% sure this is how it works, so I could be wrong, but it seems like there's just the two modes. Again, even if this is the case, I'm sure mods could fix the issue on PC, but it shouldn't even have to come to that. According to some text from the Japanese page, it looks like there's no playable Knuckles in CD. Now, I understand he wasn't in the original mobile remake of CD, but it would have been a nice inclusion. Again, this version of CD is the only mobile port that had already been released on PC for whatever reason, so we already have mods that fix that, so I guess it's no big deal, but it would have been fun to include Knuckles, and for that matter, they should have included a playable Amy. I know that's bordering on ROM hack territory, but whatever, fuck it, who cares, it would have been fun. That said, I can't really hold it against them for not including Amy. That's definitely beyond the scope of a traditional remaster. Another thing to note is this is a digital release only. Now, I can't really blame them for that, but I personally would have loved a physical copy. Mania was digital only too until Plus came out though, so who knows, anything's possible. This is a really minor nitpick, but it's kind of interesting how even in the Japanese version it seems to be using the American logos for each game. De Nuvo, ugh, are you kidding me with this bullshit? Did you not learn anything from the release of Mania? This isn't some brand new AAA release, guys. It's the fucking Genesis Sonic games. All I'll say is based on some of Stealth's comments from Mania's launch, I can guarantee you this wasn't a decision made by the people actually working on the game. It was some bullshit decision from a higher up at Sega. So I don't want to punish the cool people who worked on this game by telling you not to buy it or anything. But seriously, fuck De Nuvo, it's 2022 and they still haven't learned. This shit is stupid, it's anti-consumer, and it doesn't even fucking work! So just fuck off with this bullshit. At the very least, if Mania has anything to go by, it'll be patched out eventually, so this is only a temporary problem. Another issue is the price point of $40 or $45. That's honestly a little high, but then again, if it was Nintendo, it would be $60 for just a bunch of ROMs and a basic menu, so it could be worse. That said, if someone told me, hey, I don't feel like paying $45 to play the Genesis Sonic games again, I wouldn't really hold it against them. Reminder that Sonic Mania was sold for $20, and that was literally a new game. Just saying. I don't know why they chose to bombard people with this hideous and off-putting Ubisoft looking pre-order chart when it's really not that complicated. They really should have presented something that looks closer to this. Basically, it boils down to, do you want to pay $5 extra for a few bonus features? 
At first I was very wary of this additional music tracks from the Mega Drive slash Genesis titles option. I thought this was going to be related to the whole Sonic 3 MJ music debacle, but apparently this is just like extra tracks from Chaotix, Spinball, and 3D Blast. Uh, okay. It would be cool if there's like some kind of option where you can change the music for each stage, like they had in Generations or something. Otherwise, what am I supposed to do? Just like listen to this music in the sound test or what? Like, don't get me wrong, I love Chaotix music and I'm happy to have it in the game, but uh, if it's just in the sound test, I mean, I could just listen to it on YouTube or something. What's the point exactly? Especially if this is going to be paid DLC for people who didn't buy the digital deluxe version. And what the fuck even are some of these bonuses? Character animation in the main menu? Camera controls over the main menu islands? Character animations during music islands? What the fuck are you talking about? Is this supposed to be useful information to your average consumer? Like, gee, I was really on the fence about buying the Digital Deluxe Edition, but then I saw it had character animations and island camera. Like, again, let me say I adore these little 3D island recreations, but why the hell is the ability to look at them tied to buying the DLC or a Digital Deluxe Edition? Also, I was never really a fan of these packs that just give you shit you can already unlock in the game, like this 100 bonus coins, or unlocking the mirror mode which can be unlocked through natural game progression. This pack also includes letterbox backgrounds for classic mode, which again, feels like it should be a standard feature. Honestly, something just kind of bothers me about all this nickel and diming, like, why are you charging $5 extra for this? What's the point? Seriously, are you gonna make that much money? I think I would literally prefer if they just had the $145 edition that had everything. That would feel less insulting than this shit. Furthermore, remember when you could unlock things by playing the game? Remember unlocking games in the Mega Collection by playing the Mega Collection, not paying for DLC? Honestly, this Sonic Origins Collection really looks fantastic. Like, the widescreen option alone is going to make it the definitive official collection moving forward. But goddamn, there's just something so special to me about Sonic Jam and the Mega Collection. Like that awesome, playable 3D museum area in Jam, which was packed with all sorts of incredible pictures and cool videos like the Japanese commercials and stuff. And that was in a time before YouTube, so getting to see all that stuff felt really special. And the immaculate presentation of the Mega Collection, with that iconic music, plus a great selection of games, and fun extras like that comic cover gallery. Just a really great little compilation and tons of people's introduction of the Genesis classics. Speaking of game selections, it would have been kind of cool if Origins had some other games included. Like, it's kind of funny they're using the Spinball Island as the screen for the missions menu apparently, but there's no playable Spinball in the game, at least as far as we know. I mean, honestly, I actually get it. This kind of makes sense because all the games in the remaster are fancy and have widescreen options. It would have felt kind of weird to just slap a couple ROMs in here too and call it a day. It would have been a little jarring by comparison. Sometimes I have to remind myself to look at it not just from the perspective of a hardcore sonic dork who's going to be nitpicking it apart and just try and think about it from the perspective of an average consumer. It'll be nice to have easy access to these games, especially for newer, younger fans coming off of seeing the movies as their first exposure to Sonic maybe. I've seen a lot of people bring up that we already have Sonic 1 Forever, Sonic 2 Absolute, Sonic 3 Air and Complete. These versions will never be obsolete due to their levels of customizability and mods. In fact, it's pretty easy to argue that these are objectively the superior options on PC. However, I still think there's good cause to be excited for Origins. I mean, the people who worked on these incredible versions are just as excited to see it being done officially. I'm more than happy to buy it just to support the people who worked on it and to show Sega that yes, people still love classic 2D Sonic, and yes, it was worth it to spend the money to make these cool new animations and stuff. I mean again, I think I might be slightly biased here as a huge Sonic dork, but I think it looks like a fantastic collection of some of my favorite games of all time, so of course I'm going to buy it and have a great time playing it. You know, come to mention it, I'd love to see Sega do some kind of collection for some of the 3D games. Maybe Adventures 1 and 2, Heroes in Shadow in one pack, and maybe 06 too if they feel real ballsy. They should honestly just reach out to Chaos X and make Project 06 official. I mean, why not? It's not like 06's reputation has anywhere to go but up. And then all the boost games can go in another pack or something, and Lost World can come too, I guess. Maybe you could bundle some of the weirder games together and sell them in like a Sonic Gems collection type deal. You know what I'd really love to see? Is the advanced games get an origin style collection. Those games could really benefit from a bigger screen size. Who knows, the sky's the limit. I can't wait to keep giving Sega money for games that I've already bought and played, but unironically! 
Being a consumer is okay when I do it, because the things I consume are good, haha. <laughs> Again, I could sit here and nitpick all sorts of little complaints I have with this collection, but frankly, I'm just happy to see the classic games get such a lovingly created remastered collection. I love the incredible animations we've seen so far, and the cute little 3D diorama renditions of the islands. I love that they finally did what I was begging for, and not only brought the existing mobile ports to PC, but actually made a remaster of Sonic 3 and Knuckles too. I love that a new generation of kids who decided to try out these games for the first time can play them in a much more accessible and fun way with the widescreen and other great quality of life changes. Yeah, of course incredible versions already exist on PC, but Joe Normie, who only has a passing interest in trying out the classic games, isn't going to know that he should go download Sonic 3 Air or Sonic 1 Forever, he's just going to try the most easily accessible version. So although there are plenty of legitimate issues you can have with it like Genuvo, I think ultimately this collection is going to be a great thing for the Sonic franchise going forward. Oh yeah, about that I'm sorry Sega run I promised. <laughs> Just for the record, I could definitely weasel my way out of this obligation if I wanted to, on account of Sonic 3 Air already existing. I'm a master weaseler. But what the hell, I'll do it anyways, it'll be fun. Once Origins comes out, I'll do the playthrough live on my Twitch channel, so come watch that if you want to. And if it's the future and you already missed it, you can find it over on my VOD channel, Cybershell and Knuckles. While you're there, you should check out this playthrough I just did of Sonic Generations using a mod that lets you play as Mario with his exact moveset from Mario 64. That was a lot of fun. I'll have links in the description if you're interested. Okay, goodbye. Real video coming soon, by the way.